So you've already heard this. <laughs> so today we're going to talk about how we demonstrate our faith. Are we really manifesting our desires and our dreams? Some, I'm going to tell you something's really surprising. This might come as a shock to you. But capital big T truth never changes. <laughs> it is always capital T, big T, truth. So today we're going to talk about demonstration, the master formula for demonstration. And for some of you, it'll be like a mini refresher course. Um, but then, because you've all been around the unity block a couple of times. But since we're all individualized expressions of God, our entire life is a refresher course. Because at birth, we were born with everything that God knows. It's all in here. It's all within. It's in us. All the wisdom of God within us at birth. Yes? Okay. Very good. formula for demonstration, but first of all, I want to talk about the definition of what's the matter. <laughs> Is it coming through? No. 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 Okay. You, use the other mic. Please. Please. Okay. Oh, all right. I'll just stay here. Okay. This is good. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So first, um, we're going to talk about the master formula for demonstration. And, but first, I want to talk to you about the definition of demonstration, which I'm, all, I'm sure we all know. But I want to go over what Charles Fillmore, our co-founder, said in the revealing word about what demonstration is. And it's the proving of a truth principle in one's body or affairs. The manifestation of an ideal when it's accomplished when its accomplishment has been brought about by one's conformity in thought, word, and deed to the creative principle of God. It's an awareness that there is a divine flow, a creative flow, that is working constantly to fill and thrill us from within, to solve the needs of our lives, to guide us and direct us, not because we're specifically asking, begging, pleading, even praying, but simply because, as Jesus said, it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So where is the kingdom? Anybody? Yes, thank you. God bless you. Yes, the kingdom is within. Um, the master formula for demonstration sounds very profound, very profound and imposing. But I'm not trying to fill you with a lot of great truths today, but just possibly ignite you with, ignite something within you to release some of that inner splendor that's already there, that's always been there, just to make our awareness more of that, more of our splendor. And I'm sure you've all taken many courses, <coughs> workshops, read a lot of the New Thought books. And so, and you're still wondering, and it's, do I still have to keep working at it? Yes. Because I am too. Yeah, yeah, we have to keep working at it. Eric Butterworth said, it takes perhaps an eternity to grow into the awareness of universal law. The truth is, you are eternal. I am eternal. <coughs> and even in the knowing, we never quite get there. And that's the joy and sometimes the disappointment. But if we got there, we have ascended already. So we have work to do. Uh, 
And scripture tells us in John chapter 8, verse 32, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Eric Butterworth says, you are where you are because of where you are in consciousness, in thought. What you experience on this journey will always depend upon where you are in consciousness, where you are in thought. And the purpose of truth is not just to solve our problems, though many of us come to truth because of something negative that has happened in our past or painful. But truly, is the purpose of food to prevent us from starvation? No. And much like learning to eat for enjoyment or fueling our body, we grow in awareness of our truth to nurture and enrich our lives, not to prevent death. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, verse 25, Take no thought of what you shall eat or what you shall drink. What he was saying was, get our minds off demonstrating and begin to center our thoughts in life, in this now moment. The secret of demonstration is the secret of the ages, expressed beautifully in one of Charles Fillmore's favorite scriptures, Christ in you, your hope of glory, that Christ potential within you. <clears throat> comes from Colossians chapter 1, verse 27. We each know all we've, we each know from all we've heard and read that we are innate, innately spiritual beings with the allness of the infinite and wrapped within us. That is a fundamental truth. And we hear it over and over again. Each of us is limited only as a result of our limited awareness. That is all. Any limitations we're experiencing is because of the limitations we have in consciousness. Each of us manifests in our lives all that we can accept into our consciousness. I thought this was really an exciting prospect. But along with being an exciting process, it's a fundamental truth. God seeks to give all, but he can only do for you what he can do through you. We've all heard that one. God has already done it all. It's already done. You already have built within you all the potential of the God activity, and there is nothing more that God can give you. That is a thought to ponder. We have already got it all. Unlimited. So the thing is, we need to become aware of that. And that's what we're working on day by day. That's what unity teaches <coughs> us. Become aware of that God presence within that Christ potential. And to allow it to happen in consciousness. Thereby allowing it to fold in our experiences. God can only do for you what he can do through you. Demonstration is not a matter of trying to get God to do something. Oh God, please let me do this lesson without my iPad. No, that doesn't happen like that. You, again, you are with divine law. And it's not a thing God is going to do for me or you. It's a thing we are going to do for us. In waking up to our own innateness. And we can release that power from within, and it takes work. And it works in a very orderly, natural process.
process, the law of attraction, drawing things to us by our thoughts. And you'll begin to be more than you've ever been before when you start living from that Christ consciousness within. Because how many times during the day do you think these limiting thoughts? I know maybe you don't. I know I do. I have plenty of times that I get to have the opportunity to catch myself. <coughs> But as we unfold in that awareness, we will begin to be more than we've ever been before, our true self, our God self. Not, a, not that frustrated, limited self, wearing all sorts of false masks. The true self that we really are. It's the same thing as waking up from a bad dream. You simply awaken from the, to your true self. It was a dream. And um, Eric Butterworth, a little fan of his, um, a common phrase he said among people in the demonstration syndrome is, oh gee, oh no, I'm not just, I'm just not demonstrating lately. Have you heard that before? What exactly does that mean? Because we demonstrate every single minute of every single day. If you're sick, you're demonstrating sickness. If you're healthy, you're demonstrating wholeness. If you're rich, you're demonstrating richness. And on and on. We are always demonstrating. The use of the phrase, I'm not demonstrating, just suggests another lack of awareness of what the process of demonstration really is. It's thinking that demonstration is something that happens to us, something magic taking place in our life because we are always demonstrating. And the important thing then is to try to realize that there is a specific process and technique involved, which is as natural as breathing to demonstrate it. And that is the good news. Again, I want to repeat, God can only do for you what he can do through you. You are limited only by what you can accept in consciousness. That is a powerful thing. We already have the Christ potential within. So I ask you, do you really know what you want? Do you know where you want to go? And Butterworth said it's really important to write things down. And I love this part. Writing down helps weed out the frivolous stuff, the ego's envy to another's experience. Yeah, exactly. That's how I felt. <laughs> and get down to what is true for you. That is powerful. Demonstration is releasing that desire and making it come to fruition. So, what is this formula for demonstration? This master formula for demonstration? The law of demonstration can be put into a simple formula. C plus B equals A. C plus B equals A. That is simple. I remember it just like that. C stand, and it all stands for conceiving plus believing equals achieving. Yeah. And due to our time limits, I want to honor our time for today. Um, we're summing up this little powerful process, but it's a very workable formula. Very simply, C represents the conception, the conceiving power of mind. This is the really exciting part of this talk, so, you know, here we go. 
anything you can conceive in your consciousness. Really conceive it. And, and you all know what that means. If you think about something, say you're going to go somewhere or you want something, you want a nice new car, you want to go see your grandchildren, you want this house, you want this prosperous uh, bank account, can you see it in your mind? It truly is that simple. And I think you've also had the times when you think you just can't see that happening. And that's normal. That's normal. But the beautiful thing is, and please hear this because it's imperative to the process, anything that your mind can conceive, really conceive, I see myself on, in the park with my grandchildren having the greatest time of my life. I see my bank account looking better, whatever, whatever that dream, vision, desire is. Anything, and this is a fact, they've proven it. Anything that you can really see like that in your mind, you have that power to achieve it. If you can't see it, and I know you know what I'm talking about because some things you just can't see. Like I have wanted to be a nurse since I was a little kid, like five years old. I had my little nurse bag and all of that, and my mom wanted to buy me a doctor's bag. I did not want to be a doctor. I, I didn't want a doctor's bag, I wanted that nurse bag. But it was, and that's, and that's just a simple analogy. I could see that in my mind from that point on. And I was a nurse, I was a pediatric nurse. But it truly is that simple. Um, Myrtle Fillmore is a perfect example of that. In her mid, or in her early 30s, late 20s, she was given, she walked into a doctor's office, was given a diagnosis of tuberculosis. She said, you will not live past this year. Late 20s, early 30s. Well, she went to a, a lecture by E.B. Weeks, and what she came away with is a very profound statement. Does anybody remember that? Yeah. Yes, I am a child of God and therefore do not inherit disease. That woman worked with it for two years and thought, and she creates, she saw that in mind. And Myrtle Filmer died in her mid 80s. This process works. Um, you haven't, you don't know much about me, but I um, was on my way to ministerial school in Unity, uh, in, at Unity Institute. And I was supposed to go in January. Well, the end of October, I fractured my femur to the extent where there, they said, well, anyhow, I couldn't go. That's another story. I'll get into that another day. <laughs> but, um, I did not see that happening now because I couldn't leave. They said it was such a bad break, I couldn't go. And, and that meant I couldn't go to ministerial school or even interview for it for another six months. But one of my beautiful mentors, Reverend David Belton said, there's another school of unity and a lot of it is online. Well, the fracture happened in mid-October. By the end of October, I was enrolled in Unity Urban Ministerial School. I believed him. I saw it. I did it. That is how powerful our wonderful, beautiful minds are. If we conceive, conceive it. And let's conceive of anything. Oh. I'm telling you, I get God bumps with this, I really do. <laughs> this is why a person cannot, in their wildest imagination, conceive of anything that they do not have the God-given ability within to do it. If you can see it, 
it truly is something you can be. You can't see it? Well, that's another story. So, do you see the power we have within us? It's pretty incredible. And it's true. A dear friend of mine said to me, we have the most powerful consciousness of anything on this planet, and that is a perfect example. So the C is conceiving in consciousness, seeing it clearly. It is essential to see it clearly. We have all had those ex experiences. We know what I'm talking about. Now we move on to B, and that is believing. And the believing part of the equation is the other half of the coin, the conceiving, making the conceiving and imaging process more relevant. Believing is a positive realization in which you turn something on, but it is already in you. God has created every one of us as individualized expressions of that individual infinite process. God has already done it for every one of us. <clears throat> so first <clears throat> is the conceiving in the mind. Now the believing process is believing in ourselves that we are in fact divine expressions of God. And I think we'll all agree that we are. Sometimes we have trouble with that on our day-to-day -day existence. But that is our truth. So that doesn't leave divine expressions of God, the image and likeness of God, that doesn't leave out anything. I think you might agree with me on that. So when we conceive in mind, we must also believe in ourselves with all our heart, soul, and strength that we are these divine expressions of God. If you can't do that, if you can't believe and conceive that, you must ask yourself, do I believe I am worthy? Do you believe you're a wonderful expression of the infinite? Do you believe that? That which you desire is a part of the kingdom of heaven within you, which is the Father's good pleasure to give you. Bible is the story of our unfolding, nothing else. If you really believe that and you really believe your worthiness, then when you have the picture in mind, the believing part, you say yes. And that is faith. And it is also our fifth principle in unity, walking our talk. And now to the achieving part of the equation. And this is where the work comes in. We don't just do this in mind. That would be great. It's good for selling books, but it's not the real world. But the point is, when you expand your awareness, get the picture or vision, the conceiving, and begin to say yes, and let it happen, then this isn't hard work. The achieving part happens. When you say, yes, I can do this thing, the how it can be done ultimately unfolds. The ways, you got to do the work, but the ways will be right there for you. It just unfolds once you say yes. You see it in mind, say yes, and there we go. Off we go. So the important thing is you begin to say yes to it because as we have said, if you can get a vision of anything in your consciousness, this is all rolled up into your immediate ability to let it happen in your life. Let the achieving part with all its related activities necessary by which it can be done in a beautiful way. So. A summary of the master formula for demonstration. Conception, C plus B equals A. Conception is the conceiving power of mind. Anything you conceive in consciousness, 
really conceive it and see it as already being done, plus B, the believing. If you conceive it and believe it and say yes, as it is already done, writing it down, speaking it aloud with gratitude, it is done. I do this all throughout the day. I thank God if something's I'm worried about, I say thank you God that my pet who has serious Lyme disease, thank you God that my, my beautiful puppy is healed. I do that all the time and amazingly enough it does work, this stuff works. So speak it aloud as if it's already done, very key, and the achievement will become visible. Do not demonstrate the truth. It's a waste of time. The truth demonstrates itself. The deed is to know the truth. Identify with the truth and it will demonstrate itself. We don't have to create the good. We only unfold the good. We unfold the good life. We don't need to program our mind, but to know that we have been programmed from within by the Master. In the words of my Meister Eckhart, let God be God in you. And yes, sometimes it doesn't work. But if you did the steps and it doesn't work, then you get into a question of self-worth, and that's another talk for another day. <laughs> this works, my friends. Thank you. Thank you.